Welcome to Dory Cody on Shamanism, a weekly podcast that explores one theme in shamanism throughout each month. Get comfortable, have a seat, and let's get started. Welcome to this week's episode. This week's topic is a walk in the woods. What does that mean? Dory, our listeners can hear it in your voice. You've put a question mark at the end of this topic, a walk in the woods. Why is that? Well, I put a question mark at the end of this topic because I believe that in our culture, again, um, there is this misunderstanding that everybody's purpose, that everybody is served in some way by doing certain things. Again, going back to this topic of bliss and how do we feed our hungry soul and what is it that will help us to achieve this state of bliss? And so I say, a walk in the woods? Well, for some people, a walk in the woods is an avenue to achieving a state of bliss. For other people, a walk in the woods is not the answer. Uh, some people don't like walking in the woods. It truly does not feed their soul because they have their own construct in their mind and body. Uh, perhaps they don't like uh, perspiring. Perhaps they don't like being brushed by the leaves of the trees. Perhaps they don't like the insects that we have here in um, the Northeast or whatever. So, I, I put the question mark at the end of this topic because I, I feel it's really important for us to explore, um, not just as shamanic practitioners, but as human beings, how we tend to um, put things in boxes and, and restrict the ways in which people as individuals allow their soul to be fed. And so, you know, it's important for us. I, I know that, you know, as a shamanic practitioner, we understand, you know, in shamanism, how critically important a connection to nature is. It is tantamount to human health and well being. But it doesn't have to be a walk in the woods. <laughs> And not everybody's well-being is served by a walk in the woods. Mine is, but maybe not yours or some other listeners. And so I am saying this because I want the listeners to hear that we don't want to push other people into finding or experiencing their bliss in the same way we, as individuals, have experienced our own bliss. It could be very well that a walk in the woods for some people is an exercise in misery and does not feed their soul at all. Please explore more about how and why our modern culture stresses particular ways of achieving happiness, but does not talk more or give more permission around bliss? Yes, that's a really big question um, that we could talk about for a long, long time. I, so much in our culture is driven by what we see and what we experience on media, uh, whether it's, you know, newspaper, magazine, uh, Facebook, the internet, TV, or whatever. And we have these constructs that are fed to us by the media and or our family or individuals about what it is we are meant to do and who it is we are meant to be. And so we end up then pursuing these avenues in the, with, the mis, with the understanding, which ends up being misguided, that uh, if I do this, it's going to bring me bliss because that's what they say I should do. 
Uh, they say I should walk in the woods. They say if I meditate 15 minutes a day, I'm going to be in a state of bliss. They say if I drink this kind of beer, it's going to be better than that kind of beer. They say if I go on a cruise on this particular ship, I'm going to have the best experience of my life. They say this, they say that. Well, there is no they. You know, they is really just uh, an empty bowl. It's a construct. It's a concept that gets fed to us and there's no truth behind it because we're all individuals. So what I am um, trying to get across here in this particular topic this week is that it is of absolute necessity that we try to separate for ourselves what is it that makes me feel good you know if i grew up in a family where everybody played baseball and i felt like you know the answer to my life was to be uh somebody who love to play baseball, watch baseball, listen to baseball, learn all the baseball players' names and all of that. And I did it because it was what I thought I was supposed to do. But I have to step back and say, does that really bring me happiness? Am I happy when I'm doing all that? Does that put me in a sense of bliss? And if it doesn't, then perhaps it's not your thing. Um, you know, I remember very much being in a family where there were particular foods that everybody was attracted to. Oh, you have to like this because if you don't like this, there's something wrong with you. Well, there isn't anything wrong with you. We're all individuals. And so when we pursue what brings us bliss as an individual, then we have a chance of actually achieving bliss, of like walking away from uh, the norm or walking away from what others are telling us is the answer. We have to find our own answer. We have to explore. We have to go deep. We have to uh, let go of what isn't working for us and move in the direction of the possibility of what might work for us. Separate from what we've been told from what we know inside ourselves. What if a person has never felt blissful and therefore cannot possibly imagine what it will feel like? How can that person know when they've achieved a blissful state? Well, it's a great question. And, you know, as I talked about a couple of weeks ago, it's, it's, it's challenging because if, if you've never experienced bliss, well, how do you know you're there? I would describe being in a state of bliss as having even a, just a nanosecond, a moment, a breath in which one feels like they're in complete alignment with their own well-being and the well-being of all. So let's say, for instance, if, um, if I am in a state of bliss when I am teaching a shamanic uh, program, I know that I'm there because I lose track of time. I have to really pay attention to time. I have you know, tools around me and other people who remind me of time. I am able to get lost in the beauty and the magnificence of what is unfolding between me and the students and spirit. I feel really at one with everyone and with all that is happening. I'm in a state of bliss. I'm not, um, I'm not uh, unconscious. I'm not outside of my body. I'm in my body and my mind and my soul all at the same time. And, you know, on a physical level, often people would describe being in a state of bliss as feeling really uh, relaxed and at peace, having an experience of oneness with themselves and with whoever else is around or what aspects of nature are around and content. So 
as I said before, I, you know, it is so challenging to, ex to, un to explain what is bliss. I suggest that people listen to themselves and push themselves to experience new things with the goal being, I really want to see what this, what this is about, this state of bliss. And I wonder if I can achieve it and keep exploring different things and trust that you will know when you are in a state of bliss, you will have an experience, a moment in time that perhaps you have never had before. That is bliss. And then mark that so that you know how you can come back and experience that again. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to this topic at this time? Um, not, not truly. I, I've enjoyed talking about this and I appreciate uh, the questions and the dialogue we've had here today. Thank you for listening to Dory Cody on Shamanism. We'd love to hear your thoughts, stories, reactions, and questions. Come on over to DoryCody.com and join the conversation. And tune in next week for more on this subject or next month for a new subject. You can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or sign up on DoryCody.com to receive notices when the podcasts are posted. That's Dory, D-O-R-Y, and Cody, C-O-T-E, dot com. Drumming and Rattling by Dory Cody and Terry Morgan. Technical Assistance and Audio Production by JillHackett.com. And this is Susan Savell, wishing you many blessings in your life. We hope to have you join us next time.